Welcome to Biography Made Easy. I'm Brenda. In this tutorial episode, I am going to show you how to create a border frame around your artwork. I think it really dresses up the artwork and gives you a more polished or finished look. I'm going to start out showing you some examples of where I've used it so you could get some ideas of different ways to apply it. Well, let's get started. Examples with the Pygmy Owl, I did a flat or solid border. I did the same thing with the Raspberry Bandit, but I overlapped some of the leaves onto the border. With the Cheetah, I turned the board diagonally to give it a unique look. The Wolf has a shaped edge because Todd used a router bit on it. I left a gap of unburned wood on one of the grooves. The Little Beggar Sparrow, I did a flat frame with a gradient inner frame. I left a gap between them. In this tutorial, we will be doing a rounded frame. I burned it on the Biscuit the Pug artwork. The artwork wasn't done at the time of this video, so don't judge it too harshly. I will show you how to do some of the examples in the Variations chapter. Draw lines. Begin by using a ruler to measure and mark the inner edge of the frame. It is completely up to you how wide you want your frame to be. Then use a straight edge and draw a line connecting the marks. I run the pencil over the line a couple of times to make sure I can easily see it. Then rotate the board and repeat the steps on the next side. Continue this process until the inner frame is complete. Score lines. Clamp a metal straight edge to the board using at least two clamps. Make sure to line up the edge with the pencil line. Then use a knife with a sharp blade and score or cut along the pencil line. I am pushing the blade up against the metal straight edge to make sure that it follows the line. My straight edge isn't long enough for the board, so I am repositioning it. Then I insert the tip of the blade into the end of the scored line and finish the cut. Score the remaining lines on the board. My cuts are about 1 8 of an inch deep. Cutting with the grain line is much easier than cutting across it. Be careful not to sink the blade deeply into the wood surface when cutting with the grain. When cutting across the grain, make several passes with the knife versus trying to do one cut. Burn lines. Use a skew, rounded heel, or other thin straight pen tip and burn in the scored lines. Place the pen tip in the groove line starting at the top of the board. Gently pull the pen tip downwards. Allow the pen tip to follow the cut line. Try to keep your hand and wrist in a locked position and move your arm from the shoulder. This will make it easier to burn straight and stay in the scored line. I am using the large pen tip on the left in the inset photo in the upper right corner. I didn't care for it. The edge was a touch wider than the score line, so I had problems keeping it in the cut groove. Normally, I would have used the rounded heel on the far right because it has a much thinner edge. I thought the larger pen tip would get the job done faster and maybe it would have if I was more familiar with it. Highlight Use a ruler to find the center of your border frame. Then mark the spot with a white charcoal pencil. Do this several times. Afterwards, draw a line connecting the white marks. I'm freehanding the line because the charcoal didn't transfer well 
when I was using a straight edge. I'm not sure why. Outer edge. Use a shader of your choice and burn a wide band of color that starts on the outer edge of the frame and stops on or slightly over the white line. Then reburn over the area, but this time stop a little ways before reaching the white line. Reburn over the area one more time, but this time only burn down one quarter of the way to the white line. One more time, burn bands of color that start at the top of the board. Pull the pen tip down towards the white line. Stop burning at or slightly past the white line. Make sure to slightly overlap your burn strokes. If the area starts looking streaky, then reburn over it to smooth out the color. This first round of burning is giving a base color to the area. I have the heat set on my burner to get a really dark tan or light brown burn result. After the base color is in place, then reburn over the area to darken up the upper three quarters of the frame. Again, start the burn stroke at the top of the board and pull it down towards the white line. Stop the stroke a short distance before reaching the white line. When you end the stroke, lift the pen tip gradually up and away from the board so that the burn marks gradually fade away. Do not pause or stop with the pen tip resting on the board. Also, slightly overlap your burn strokes to help hide individual burn strokes. Repeat the reburning process one more time, but this time stop about one quarter of the way down. This is to darken up the edge of the board so that we have nice contrast between it and the highlight at the center. The board I am burning on is large and it took me about one hour to burn the outer edge of the frame on one side of the board. By that time, I was tired of working on the frame. I erased the charcoal because I discovered that if left on the board for longer than a couple of hours, it became difficult to erase. Inner Edge With the inner edge, Begin by burning a dark, wide band of color along the scored line. This creates a buffer zone. The buffer zone means you don't have to be precise when starting burn strokes. Instead, you can start them anywhere in the buffer zone. That is the only difference between the inner and outer edge of the frame. Make sure you have rotated the board so that you are pulling your pen tip down towards the white line. As you can see, I did not redraw the white line. The reason is that I decided I did not want the highlight on my frame to be super pale in color. Since the charcoal isn't there, I can burn over the highlight area to darken it up a little. What I am really doing is altering the contrast between the center and the edges of the frame, and that controls how round the frame looks. We will discuss that further in the Controlling Roundness chapter. I like to work in small sections at a time. This is just a personal preference and not something that you have to do. If you prefer, burn your base color across the entire upper edge and then do your reburning. Hopefully, you have noticed that there is a lot of reburning involved with creating the frame. The reburning is the key to getting smooth color. It allows you to build up the tonal depth in a controlled manner, something that is very difficult to do when burning at a high heat and trying to get the job done with just one layer of burn marks. Yes, the reburning method does take longer to do but I think that the results are worth the time investment.
corners. The only modification needed with the corners is to angle the burn stroke from the outer corner towards the inner corner. The angle should gradually increase as you transition into the corner. The opposite is also true. The angle should decrease as you transition out of the corner. Always rotate the board as needed so that you can pull the pen tip downward towards the white line. Now unfortunately, my big head got in the way of the camera and blocked the rest of the corner being burned in. As I said before, the only modification to the corners is the angle you are burning at. Other than that, the corners receive the same treatment and get three rounds of burning. During the rounds of reburning, the length of the burn strokes get shorter. If needed, you can burn additional layers of color to help smooth out the burn marks. Controlling Roundness The upper left corner, framed in green, looks flat because it is uniform in color. The upper right corner looks slightly rounded because there is tonal contrast between the center and the edges of the board. The lower left corner looks rounded because the edges of the board are darker compared to the center. Plus, there is gradient shading transitioning between the edges and the center. The lower right corner looks very rounded because of the extreme contrast between the edges and the highlight. Notice how I shifted the highlight off center. You are in control of how rounded your frame looks and the location of the highlight. Fixing Mistakes A horizontal line formed on my frame. I am using an electric eraser to remove the excess color. The eraser is not turned on because it would be too difficult to control how much color is removed. Instead, it just holds the eraser that I am gently rubbing over the area to remove the excess color. Here's a before and after comparison. Variations I often put a solid or uniformly colored border around my artwork. It is easy to do. You simply burn uniform strokes along the edge of the frame until it is filled with the desired color. All of my border frames start out the same way. They begin by drawing a line for the inner edge of the frame, scoring the line with a sharp knife, and then burning in the scored line with a rounded heel or skew pin tip. You can get creative with solid borders by turning the board diagonally or overlapping elements from the artwork onto the border. Another way to get a solid border is to use a torch. I am not very good at it, but the basic premise is to use a shield to protect the artwork as you burn the edges. I am using a drywall knife with a wooden handle as my shield. Using a torch produces a lot of carbon on the board, so make sure to wipe over it with a clean paper towel or spray it with a sealant. With this artwork, I have an outer and inner border. The outer border is just a solid or uniform border, and we've already discussed that. So let me show you the inner border. This method is very similar to the inner frame chapter. We have a burned over scored line and a dark buffer zone to start burn strokes in. The difference is that we are burning pull away strokes on this border. I highly recommend rotating the board so that you are pulling the pin tip down towards yourself. So try to ignore the bad example that I am showing you. Pull away strokes start darker than they end. So it is important to start the stroke 
in the buffer zone or on the edge of the frame or wherever it is you're burning. Pull the pen tip out and away from the buffer zone and lift your hand up quickly at the end of the burn stroke. This will help the burn stroke fade away to nothing. It's important to slightly overlap the burn strokes and to re-burn over the area to smooth out the color. Doing both of those will help hide individual burn strokes. And again, you really should have the board rotated so that you are pulling the pin tip down towards yourself. The reason is that it is much easier to control the pressure on the burn stroke and it will give you smoother looking results. Board Sides If I put a border frame on my artwork, I also darken up the sides of the board because I think it gives it a more professional look when it's hanging on the wall. I also darken the sides of the board if the overall color on the background is dark. This bighorn sheep artwork is a good example of that. I now paint the sides of the boards with acrylic paint. I don't burn the sides because it's time consuming and often they don't burn evenly. Apply the paint towards the back edge of the board. Then brush the paint from the back edge towards the front edge of the board. This will help keep the paint from beating up on the front of the artwork. Most likely, it will take a couple of coats to cover the board. With the wolf, I burned a solid border around the edge of the board. Then, I painted the sides of the board. Todd used a router bit on the board to give it a shaped edge. I left one of the router grooves alone for contrast. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you found the information useful. On my website, Pyography Made Easy, I have the written version of this tutorial, and I will put a link to that blog in the description below. Well, thank you so much for watching my video, and I will see you next week.